so we're here on um, on the trial. This is the very first Let's Talk Hustle. And uh, with us now is Yolanda Lotson. Uh, she's kind of become uh, YouTube famous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of videos of you on on uh, on a one, two, three. And uh, you've been dancing a lot uh, in the last couple of years. So uh, this is, the, of course, the very first ever uh, podcast for Let's Talk Hustle. And uh, who better to start with than the person I run with all the time? So, uh, you know, uh, you've really come a long, a long way. Uh, and especially in the very beginning for a long time, you're much better than I was in hustle. And I, I had hustle history. But I have I have a, a few questions to ask you, and then we could just kind of, you know, go for there and you know uh, see what develops from this conversation. So um, I know that uh, I kind of know your history, but I want to uh, ask you these questions so that other people can know your history. So did you dance back in the day? Which day? <laughs> you know, back in the day. You know, like. In the you know, 70s? like from, from 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 the from adulthood. No, your adulthood. Back in the day, oh, your day. adulthood. Yeah, like when you when you started becoming an adult. You know, like what's your what's your dance history? Oh, okay, so you know, I'm from I'm African American. Um, my parents are from the South, so in Black families, dance is kind of part of the culture. Um, but that's like the two step or whatever dance was trending at that time. So. You know, when I was about, I guess, between three or five, the Jackson 5 were big and, you know, they had Dance Machine and, you know, we'd be doing the robot and all those dances back then. So right. <laughs> I guess that was my, you know, introduction to dance, like, mm -hmm. as culture. Right. Then, you know, as a little kid, every little girl pretty much goes to, like, ballet school or tap school and, so I did that, and I was a gymnast as well. But um, it wasn't until, like, the 70s, early 80s, you know, disco became really big. And uh, my babysitter had teenage kids, and uh, they used to come home, and they would try to practice with um, my best friend, which was my babysitter's daughter, and me, uh, the hustle. So... You know, we got the first dibs on these new styles of dance, you know, at age nine and 10. And then we would have these black parties and, you know, everybody would be trying to do the latest dances. Um, fast forward to high school and college, house music was more popular at the time. And so, you know, I would go to some college parties, but I really wasn't one to be out dancing or clubbing or anything like that. I was more career minded um, during my late teens into adulthood. So for many years, I did not really dance. Um, I got married, had two children. So I was more of a career woman slash mom slash wife. Um, so then fast forward <laughs> to my kids getting older, well, getting divorced my kids getting older and me needing something to do. I was mostly on my computer most of the time. And I had bought computers for my kids when they were very young, like five, six uh, years old. And they stumbled upon YouTube and um, they introduced me to YouTube. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> and it's like, Oh, people make videos. And I'm like, who would watch these things? Like, I, well, obviously, I became one of the people that watched those things. <laughs> what year and was I, it? That probably was in the mid to late uh, 2000s. So I would say probably like I got divorced in 2005. So somewhere between 2005, 2009, 2010. And um, I came across this video of who I come to know, know very well, uh, Boots, um, John wow. Marie and uh, Erica Smith, the hustling lawyer. 
And um, I didn't know then, but I know now they were at an IHSC and they uh, were dancing Latin Hustle. And um, actually, I, I know now that this is on Erica's YouTube channel, but I saw them dancing to Lady Gaga's uh, Poker Face. And I was like, oh, my God. That was the first time I had ever seen black people like dance what I know now is a social dance. Um, and it was just amazing. I couldn't believe it. It was just so beautiful. And I said, one day I'm going to learn how to dance like that. And I started following Erica. Actually, she had a website. I don't know if she still does, but at the time she had a website, you know, talking about, you know, her dance her dance um, career and I guess the fact that she's a lawyer. And I just kind of identified with, with that because I was a working professional too. I was in IT, information technology. I was a programmer and I did various things in the IT field. And so I kind of like felt like she was like a kindred spirit, you know? And mm. I was like, one day I'm going to be like that. And so that was my first introduction to social dance but it wasn't until i guess that probably is around probably like 2008 2009 and they were dancing what dance latin hustle okay it was that and it, i think it did say latin hustle in the title um it was so amazing um and i used to watch that video a lot over and over <laughs> over and over <laughs> And then I and then it just kind of went away because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it at that time. You know, my kids were still kind of young. Um, then in 2000, hmm, I think it was 10, 2011, I went to a, um, a high school reunion event. Um, I went to Brooklyn Technical High School. In Brooklyn, New York, is a specialized high school, and um, it's a very kind of unusual place because it's very large, large community. And um, in my graduation class, it was probably like about twelve hundred people. So they still have an active alumni association, and in for my year, we get together every so often for different events. So okay. this guy by the name of Jose. Can't remember Jose's last name right now. Um, he passed away, but I, I will always remember him because it was because of him that I started social dancing. He put on an event the day after Thanksgiving of 2000, I think it was 10, either 10 or 11. And I went to this event. It was at this place called Iguanas. Uh, I don't know if Iguanas is still around. It, oh, it, yeah, no, it's still around. It's still around, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think, like, in the 50s, near Broadway, right. Mexican restaurant, they were famous for having um, Latin night upstairs, I think on Saturday nights, and then they had, like, a regular club downstairs in the basement, and then the middle floor was, like, restaurant. So he had this little affair of a few of us from high school, upstairs and they threw on some some salsa music you know after we ate they threw on the salsa music and everybody was dancing he was dancing and he was dancing with another classmate's sister-in-law that he'd never met this lady was from france <laughs> of all places and they were able to dance together and i just thought that was so incredible like how do you know what to do like how can you dance in such harmony and you've never met each other and you know she's from france and you're from here but i think he was panamanian um and he can't really explain it <laughs> but um i said you know what i want to learn i want to learn at that time i had one of my friends his name is jamil was with me at this particular event and he and I was like would you take uh classes if you know come with me to take classes if I decide to go and he's like yeah and so we went to dance sport um at the time dance sport gave free 
um, a free class, like introductory class to mm -hmm. whatever dance, ballroom dance you wanted to do. So this is 2010, 2011. That was okay. I, I got to get these dates right. 2011. I think this was 2010. It's either 2010 or 2011. Um, so the following year, that January, we went to this free class and it was all these women and maybe like Jamil and maybe one or two other men. <laughs> and I found out that you didn't even need to bring anybody. You know, you rotated amongst each other. I took salsa. That was what I took. And um, I didn't really get a chance to dance that much because they were rotating the three men with all the women. So he got a chance to dance more than me. <laughs> but, but it opened me up to like, oh, wow, you know, the possibilities. Right. Um, unfortunately, I didn't start then because um, of finances. And then my kids were still young and making the time. You know, I just wasn't in the right place to, to continue. Right. Um, so I just shelved it, but I, you know, I thought like maybe one day. Okay. So fast forward to 2016, um, October, October, 2016. Um, my daughter was a dancer. Um, she went to performing arts high school and she used to dance at this dance company in Brooklyn called Dance Wave. And Dance Wave was located on Dean and Fourth Avenue on the corner, and one day I was walking there to um, go this drop off. Bro this is in Brooklyn. This is in Brooklyn. Yes, right. I went there to drop off uh, her tuition payment for the for the month. Okay. <laughs> and um, I thought I turned down Dean, but I didn't. I'm, I turned down Bergen. And um, when I got to Fourth Avenue, I was like, "Wait a minute, where's Dance Wave?" And then I said, "Oh, I'm I'm one block over." So I walked past, walked down the street, and in the middle of the block is this place called Salsa Salsa Dance. And I just happened to notice. I was like, "Salsa, ah, you always want to take salsa." I said, "I'm gonna take down this number, and I'm gonna call them when I get home because it's time." You know my. My kids was getting big. You know, they were in high school by that time. I think my son, yeah, he was still in high school, but, you know, maybe a year or two later, he, he would have been graduating. And I said, I'm going to call them. So I paid. I stopped off at Dance Wave. I went home, called them up, and asked them, you know, about classes. How much were, were they? I think they were, like, maybe $15, $20 at the time. And the guy told me i think it was marcus at the time um if, with thinking back on the voice marcus um, Nevis? mark no no um marcus i forgot marcus's last name nevis is nevis in williamsburg oh okay marcus this marcus has a different name i can't remember his name right now his last name but um he said we're going to be starting a new actually this must have been september this had to be mid-September. He says, we're going to be starting a new uh, beginner class October, October 6, 2016. <laughs> and I said, oh, I am going to be there. I can't wait. He says, yeah, come on down. It's so much fun. You know, very affordable. I was like, okay, I'm coming. And so I'll never forget this. I had jury duty. Probably couple of uh about a week or so prior and um that last day i was like i gotta get out of this jury duty i gotta get because i didn't want to do it and it was my last day of jury duty and i got out of it and i remember telling the guy another guy that was trying to beat the jury duty <laughs> i was like now i'm going to take salsa classes i'm gonna walk over there from the courthouse right. over to salsa salsa i right. walk and I started my very first salsa class, October 6, 2016. Huh? And that was the beginning of a life um, transform transformative thing. I mean, it totally transformed my life. Right. Dan this, this whole thing totally transformed my life. From the first salsa class 
who um, I took with this guy named Joseph Medina, Salsa Salsa Dance. Um, it totally changed my life. Prior to that, I had been dating and it just wasn't working out with these guys that, you know, <laughs> it was right. the guys, but it was also me too, because, right. you know, I was looking to, to a relationship to fulfill things that I need to fulfill within myself. And, um, I didn't really understand that until I started social dancing mm. and, um, it totally changed my life. That very first class was like falling in love. I will never forget the feeling um, from just doing the basic. <laughs> so everybody who knows about social dancing, you know, you start out with that basic in South Size 1, 2, 3, uh, 5, 6, 7. And it could be the most boringest thing. But like, you know, when you are eager to learn, it's the greatest thing, you know? So I came home and I practiced that thing. I practiced that step all week long. I threw on some music, what I thought was good salsa music, but I didn't know. And, um, and that, that, was, your, that was the that beginning. That was your beginning. You know, you're, was, you've already answered questions that I was about to ask you. <laughs> Well, you know, but you know how I am. Yeah, yeah, you know, but it's good. It's good. It's good that yeah. you, you know, that you brought all these things out because I was gonna come up to you, but you know, um, tagging on to that, you know, the last thing that you said, like, what was your approach to dance when you started? Like, when you started, what what was your idea, and what did you want to walk away with? Well, one, I wanted to just understand how how do you know what to do? Like, how do you get to the other side? Like, how do you stay in sync with your partner? Um, mm -hmm. It just was, I didn't understand how it worked. And when I went to that event um, with my friend Jose, uh, that my friend Jose had hosted, um, that's where I had remembered about the video I'd seen with Erica and and boots and I didn't really even make the connection that it was two totally different dances but I knew that it was they were dancing in unison and I wanted to learn how to do that I wanted to learn how to be in unison with my partner just have an understanding and so that first class you know we had the basics you know in salsa you have these shines which are um dance that you do alone footwork, footwork right? mm -hmm. yeah. but then they also had you know an introductory to the partner work where you learn how to um, move in sync because you're starting on one foot and he's starting on another foot and right. cross body lead. So how to get to the other side. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then we build from there. Um, so my, initially that's what I wanted to gain was that. Um, but you and, know, and it's like- and what was your frequency? Like, how often did you go? Did you, you know, did you, you know, buy packages or did you, you know, uh, you know, go once a week? You know, like, what was, how did you approach that? You already know. You already know. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but. Everybody but, else does it. But people yeah. don't know. And, yeah. and people want to know. They want to know. Because this is also going to, you know, go right into, and I guess you could also add this as you're, as you're speaking, is that like. Like, how did you excel so quickly? But right. kind of jumping the gun here, but uh, explain to us. Right. So I'm the kind of type of person I am. <laughs> I'm going to help. Once I realize, like, I see something I like and something I want to learn, I zone in. Mm -hmm. I do so much research. Um, and, and then I just go in hard, pretty much. So what happened was at Salsa Salsa, they had this rule that you could only like for the first month or two they advise you to come just once a week because you they wanted you to get the fundamentals you know right. they and they want you to stick with the class your beginner class because that, yeah that makes sense so that there's no information overload yeah ex that's, exactly that's, yeah. and then too i guess they didn't want you to slow down all the classes that had been you know further into right because then that ha hampers the people that were in the other classes too okay that are a little further along so so i guess it was about a month 
I'd been going once a week and that was fine. You know, I was meeting a lot of new people. It was just so, it was just such an incredible experience, especially did there. Practice, did you practice at home or? I practiced or? at home. Like I said, from that very first class. How often? <laughs> Every day, <laughs> every, every day, all the time. <laughs> right. I would come home. I would do my basic when I'm cooking, when I'm, you know, brushing my teeth, when I'm washing dishes. Like I was doing that basic. I would throw on. Um, I would go on YouTube, find something that sounded like salsa music, even though it wasn't really the salsa music that I've come to love and appreciate. It was right. more covers of American songs. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's this guy, Tony Sukar. Tony Sukar, he does like these covers. I mean, actually the covers are nice, but I wouldn't necessarily dance salsa to his music right, right. now. But back then that was like my connection. So I throw on like, he'd do like Michael Jackson covers and all right. kinds of stuff. And so I would then- throw that on and I would do my basic for like an hour two wow. hours yeah like i went so now, so now after a month after, after a month you know i was superstar in class you know i i follow all the directions because you know the teacher's telling you what to do so you don't realize that that's why you know what to do <laughs> so um i don't know if it was that day no i don't think it was my birthday but it was it was kind of close around my birthday. Since I started in October, my birthday's in December. This guy named Mike, I don't know what his last name is, but I always used to call him Ponytail Mike because he had a little ponytail. Older, older <laughs> and guy. He's a little older, yeah. He probably was in his 60s. He was a retired school teacher. I remember he told <laughs> me that. Married guy, very nice. He, he was taking classes too? He was taking classes. He was like a class person. Like, I... One thing I realized after going to class a lot, that there's people that that's all they do is that's their entertainment. That's right. that's their what yeah. they do and is go to these dance classes. That's how they get out. Not to say that he did this, but you know, that's how some of these guys get to touch on pretty women, but you know, they're not doing it inappropriately. <laughs> you know, and mm-hmm. you know, you get to commune with people, you know? So I, I recognize down the line that that's what a lot of people do. They don't necessarily go there to really go to learn how to social dance and get out there and really learn, learn go and dance. Right. It was ultimately my goal to go out and dance, but I hadn't made that, flip that switch yet. Mm-hmm. So Mike, so, so Mike. Mike, Mike, it was, it was a Thursday night. My classes were on Thursday nights and my class was was from six at that time they were two hour classes so it's from six to eight and so mike comes to me and he's like hey you know are you going to the social and i was like the social what's that <laughs> he goes <laughs> oh he's a is is where we go and practice i said oh really and he goes yeah i said oh i didn't know about that and he's like yeah we go and practice what we learn in class i was like oh yeah well, i'd love to do that because <laughs> i ate slept, drank salsa. Like, you would have thought I was Puerto Rican or Cuban or whatever. (laughs) Maybe Cuban. This is like six weeks in. Yeah, I would say it's about six. Yeah, not quite two months. About six weeks or so in. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was like, yeah. Uh, You know, where where is it? He goes, oh, it's just around the corner, you know. Um, right. At this place called Yayo's at the time, which was, you know, popular Thursday night spot. And it was a restaurant and in the basement, um, DJ yeah. John John. Well, I'm just giving them a little, you know, <laughs> DJ John John would play salsa in June, would play bachata in another room. Right. And it was like a basement party. So, so Mike said, oh, I'll wait for you. I said, Okay. So he walked me around the corner, which I thought was so nice. He paid for me to get in. It was $7 nice. at the time. And nice. I was like, oh, no, you have to pay. He's like, no, no, it's your first time I'm, I'm going to pay for you. I was like, thank you. So nice. That's another thing about salsa. 
and just the dance community in general about the niceness of the people. Like I had never really experienced a community that was just so accepting and giving. And it was just what I was needing at that time in my life. Right. And especially from a male that did, wasn't looking for anything from me. He was he was married. He wasn't trying to hit on me or anything. He was just he could see in me what I didn't even know was there at the time. Mm. And um as far as dance and dance capability. And um So how was Yayus? Yeah, yeah. So he, he paid, I got the wristband, we go downstairs and he he then makes everybody at the place, all the guys dancing. So he walks me over to each and every guy and they, and he said, dance with her. And so they did. They listened to him. They danced with me. And I I was a superstar in class, but I had absolutely no idea what to do on the dance floor. I didn't know what to do. And I couldn't understand. Like, well, I can dance in class. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> so... So he took me to like about six guys, maybe, you know, six, eight guys, whatever. And I felt like a failure in a way. But then, but at the same time, I felt exhilarated. Like, wow, like this is it. This is it. And then he came to me after I danced with the last guy. And he said, listen, because I was like, I got to go now. I have to go home because it was getting late for me. You know, I. I didn't, I didn't go out, uh, right. you know, a typical night for me was home knitting you, uh, literally, um, and maybe watching like some, um, reality show, you know, housewives of Atlanta or whatever. <laughs> um, okay. so it's probably like by that time, maybe about almost 10 and I wasn't used to going out. So I was like, I got to go nine thirty, something like that. And so I went over to him, I gave him a hug. I said, thank you so much for, you know, bringing me here and for um, having everybody dance with me. You know, I see I got to go back to class because I don't really know anything. (laughs) And so then he he says, I said, so I'll see you next week, okay? And he goes, no, you're not going to see me next week. I'm like, what do you mean I'm not going to see you next week? He says, oh, because I'm going, um, I'm going to be out of commission. I'm going to get my shoulder operated on because I had, he had a bike accident or something like that. And he said, I'm going to be out for about six months. And I was like, what? So I'm like, oh, my buddy that brought me here is not going to be here to hold my hand, you know? <laughs> and right. he said, but he said to me, and I will never forget this. I will never forget it. I almost like want to cry, you know? He said, but you keep coming back because you're going to be an amazing dancer one day. And I, he says, I could just see it in you. You just have it. You have that thing. And mm-hmm. I said, oh, thank you. I promise you, I will keep going to class and I will come back. Yeah, so, and I don't know why I'm crying, but. <laughs> <laughs> you it's know, just, it, yeah, it you know, when, you're, when you're in the middle of that transformative time of your life, Right, and, and you remember these things. I could, I could see how it could, you know, it could touch you because I know, you know, from knowing you, of course, that you know your life went in a direction that was, you know, um, uh, really filled with dance. Uh, you know, uh, going from that moment, you know, that misty-eyed moment, uh, you know, in, <laughs> in, in let's encapsulate, you know, salsa and how much, like, how. Uh, you know, briefly, how, how much time did you really put into it? How far do you think you got to it? And then we're going to we're going to jump into hustle. OK, so that's perfect. Perfect segue, because that very like next day I went back to Salsa Salsa and I was like, what kind of package? Like, I need to take more classes. So I was at that time taking one class a week and that was like like a $90, I think it was like $90, which was not bad, you know, for yeah. like four classes a month. And, um, and I was like wondering if they was going to like bend the rule of like, you can only take one class <laughs> a week. <laughs> <You know? laughs> not realizing that's just like, they say those things, but 
if you could keep up, they don't really mean it, you know? Right, so right. I was like, you know, what kind of packages do you have? So I ended up getting signing on for the $120 a month. I think it was $120 or $100 or something like that, where you could take three classes a week. Mm. And and I started, I went, I think that night I started it, and which was Friday. Um, I used to go Friday nights with Walter and Vicky. And um, and then after that, I think I came back on that Saturday or Sunday and took another class. And then I was realizing, like, this is not going to be enough classes. Like, I got to take <laughs> more classes. I was like, you know what? I said, I just got the this 120 package. But can I upgrade to the 140 package, which was unlimited? Unlimited. Right. And I pretty much was going, like, almost every day. Like, wow. Um, and but, they, at the time, it was like two hour classes. Like I started taking two classes on Thursdays from six to uh, ten, and then I would go to Yayos and dance afterwards. I would okay. take class, class on Friday, which was two hours, and then every other week I would go to this place called Cherry Tree at the time, and okay. I would dance there. I would go on uh, sometimes on Saturday two hours Sunday two hours plus I would take two hours of bachata and um, what what's it called bachata <laughs> bachata bachata okay go ahead continue <laughs> so so I was dancing in class uh I would say 12 hours like 12 hours a week. And then social dance. And then social dance. I was going to Yayo's every week. Then I started meeting people. And, you know, everyone who knows me knows that I, well, in Southside, I used to run with Miyoshi. Miyoshi Pearson and I were like Batman and Robin. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. So we were always out. And then there was this other young lady. Her name was is because she's still she's alive Her name is veronica perilius a little veronica she was young at the time in her early 20s just flitting around and she was a person like telling us that hey you know yayas is all right but that's not where it's at you need to go to the city like that's right. where the real dancers go you know sasamania and lvg and she was you know, meeting all the young guys in the studio and they were taking her all around. And so she, right. Taj, Taj. And then I started watching these videos on YouTube and on Facebook and seeing people dance at like Taj. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like the big time. <laughs> I, so, need, so, I need to so go there. You used to go to all those, all those in the city as well. Yeah. So I, I started going to, you know, to the socials in the city. And I started going on YouTube and really doing research on who are the salsa dancers, like who are the ones. Right. And um, that's when I stumbled up on like Grisa Ponce, who I just totally idolized with regards to salsa. I thought she was like the best editorist. I found out about him. Um, and uh, and then that really just kind of catapulted my journey into taking classes outside of um, so. Salsa Salsa. But Salsa Salsa is always my home. They welcomed me, you know, in it's like a, a family environment. And um, I got a really good foundation in a friendly environment that was non-competitive, you know, non-judgmental uh, into social dancing. So October and, 6, 2016. Right. Well, again. a year later when I met you, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you seem to me, you know, a bit more accomplished than someone who had been dancing for a year. And then I understood why, because you had all this sweat equity and, you know, in your dancing in one practicing at home, still taking classes and, you know, social dancing. And that, that was a that was a perfect recipe for, you know, for growth, you know, and uh, not just growth, but excelling. So uh, and it's, it's funny you mentioned Salsa Salsa, too, because I think. I, I could be wrong, but I think your first official uh, uh, group classes was at Salsa Salsa for Hustle, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's uh, that's very interesting because from that point on, uh, you know, of course, from when you know they they had that 
salsa hustle thing that uh, DJ Woody would have in the decal market. Right. So, uh, but this is what we're going to do uh, because we're kind of over time and I, we definitely got to have a part two. We definitely got to have a part two because you got to give us all this hustle stuff, right? And, and it's <laughs> very interesting, all the stuff that you, you know, that you've experienced, not just your life experience, but how that ties in with dance and how now dance is really a way for you to really see how life exists because you know we could we could draw parallels right between yeah. life and dance in general you know partner dancing you know there, there's a lot to be said about that but i think what we'll do is we'll have a part two and we'll pick up from salsa salsa hustle maybe a little bit before that because i know you took a class at decalb and oh, uh oh even you know, yeah yeah, we, yeah we're going to you're going to we'll, so we'll really go from hustle and then continue from there so yeah. this is Yolanda Lotson, uh, you know, uh, born and raised in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, uh, this is my partner. Actually, uh, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Long they, my, but, uh, back, but, I, but I live in Brooklyn now. I love Brooklyn. Yes. I love Brooklyn, so. <laughs> yes, I, I sit corrected. But, uh, <laughs> and for those who don't know, uh, Yolanda is my partner, you know, uh, and, you know, we met. In, you know, that following year that she first went to Salsa Salsa and we've been running ever since. And we'll talk more about that as well. But really, thank you so much for one, being the, my, my very first, you know, uh, interviewee, my first guest in, uh, you know, what I hope to be a really great podcast and, and something informative for the hustle community. So thank you so much. I'm very grateful uh, for uh, you know, for you um, getting over the heebie-jeebies about it and all that. I know and, because I was like, "Oh, yeah, I know." First, I know you know I didn't want you to use this one as the first one. At first, I did, but then I didn't. I think we're gonna use yeah. this, but yeah. I think we, we should use this one because yes, it's like, yeah, this. yeah, with the kinks and so, everything. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's very good. Yeah, I'm very happy in the results, yeah, you, and I'm thank happy you for to, having me. Oh, absolutely, and I, I. I I knew that you would get comfortable uh, once you start getting Talking. into your story. I knew that. Yeah, I didn't want to say it like that. <laughs> but, uh, yes. So, uh, we're going to sign off here from Let's Talk Hustle. And uh, I still got some editing to do because uh, I don't even have the... I do have music and I do have some other stuff, but I'm going to do a little montage of your dancing, hopefully. and We'll see how it turns out. But anyway, thank you I so much. You. And, thank uh, you. Signing off to everybody in Hustle Land. All right. Yeah, so we're back with uh, Let's Talk Hustle, Yolanda Lotson. This was supposed to be a separate entity as far as a video is concerned, but uh, because I uh, I realized part of it was through your urging and uh, a couple other people of having, uh, you know, episodes that are not as short as what we had last. So we're going to pick up from uh, where we left off. I believe, actually, I believe we were you know, fast forwarding from your dancing uh, experience to about 2019. I know that uh, uh, DJ uh, Woody uh, was doing the decal market uh, hustle and salsa event. And, you know, we started going and uh, you and I, but 2019, I think is, is probably the launching point for you maybe for when you started to, uh, get educated in, in dance for hustle. Um, actually, twenty eighteen. Okay. So 20, in t- summer twenty eighteen, probably June July, I took a class at Salsa Salsa Dance with Xavier Cado, and uh, he had a workshop. And I probably took about five classes. Okay. Um, but I wasn't over my salsa addiction at that time, so I didn't <laughs> dance. <laughs> Um, yeah. I didn't dance. I didn't dance hustle socially. So, yeah. Fast forward to 2019 when we started going to decal market with Woody, and um, 
and that was a great time because we got a chance to mingle and see some of the hustle people that we had been watching on YouTube because I had started doing a little research like I always do. Once I started New Dance, I right. tend to um, go on YouTube. And I remember um, seeing a video of Veronica Castilla at a IHSC. It was late night hustle at IHSC, but she danced with a lot of people. And it was so incredible. And I said, I have to find that girl. I want to dance with her. I want to learn from her. I want to dance just like her. Um, and it just so happened that she was in New York, which I didn't really know, but she, uh, one decal market. I didn't. I wasn't really in the mood to go, but she said, "Oh yeah, you definitely going to this one." And I was trying to figure out why. <laughs> and you told me that Veronica was going to be teaching a class, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I gotta go. That's a no brainer." And uh, so that's where I got connected with Veronica, and I started going to class with her. And um, and then the pandemic hit. I took about maybe three classes, maybe two or three classes with her into 2020. And, um, and then a pandemic and then, and then that was it for a couple of years. Well, yeah. Until yeah, the following year. year. Yeah. The following yeah. year when, uh, things opened up like in April right. 2021. Right. 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 And then we went to, um, well, all through that time, you started on your music, and then right. <laughs> we would try to dance to your music. <laughs> right, and right. Um, and then I was thinking that your music was too fast. It was crazy. And he was like, oh, no, this is not hustle tempo. And I'm saying, oh, yes, it is, because I wasn't strong with my hustle. Right, right, right. <laughs> so um, I thought I was somewhat correct, but. Um, timing, timing. I still didn't have it solid. And uh, but we practiced. I remember we used to practice in your kitchen. We used to practice in the bed. We used to practice all over in your living room, in the bedroom. Hustle. Right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, doing what we thought we knew. And then I remember you also had given me some um, DVDs of. Billy Fajardo and Katie Marlowe. Right. And I looked at a few of those to kind of see how to do things. Um, but it wasn't until 2021 when we went to Nelson Flores for his um, workshop. I think he had a five week workshop. Right. That it really came together. Um, Right. Nelson just has a way of teaching you. Um, it's like teaching for dummies. <laughs> Hustle for dummies. Right. <laughs> he gets you up and running fast. Yeah. You, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you feel c confident. Not that Veronica didn't. It's just I didn't have enough time with her to to get to that point. Um but he gets you up and on the dance floor very quickly. And so yeah. after that, after those five weeks, that was it. We were we were on on the ground running. We was going to everything. And then I met I had met Sarah. Actually, then Veronica started teaching again. And um myself and Miyoshi, we started going to her class down in the village, East Village. And yeah. um, we, and then we start to meet some of the hustle people like um, Sarah Green, and um, and then I knew Gil from Salsa, but then I realized oh, he's in South, he's in Hustle too, so right. I was happy about that because he was always a a favorite of mine on the Salsa dance floor. Um, yeah, and then then we found out about Sarah's Hustle BK. Yeah, Hustle Club. Hustle yeah, Club Hustle BK. Club BK. Yeah, she opened it up to more people and started having it at the Loft in Brooklyn. And the rest is history. We yeah, just... that was a that was a good time, uh, especially 
uh, with all the people that were regulars in general, those folks who never really stopped dancing hustle. Right. And they were coming from everywhere. And, uh, you know, it turned out to be, you know, a really great event until, you know, uh, until it was done, you know, like from, I think she started March, but we didn't start going in April, uh, April and May. And then it ended in August, you know, that the Brooklyn iteration of it. Right. Right. And um, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's that, nice. yeah. So I know that uh, you've learned a lot, you know, from, you know, many classes and also on the dance floor socially. Um, but what do you think has been your, your biggest hustle achievement? Hmm. My biggest hustle achievement. Well, I would say dance wise, um, the performing because I had wanted, I had always wanted to perform um, when I was in salsa. Uh, right. I knew that I didn't want to compete, um, which is a pathway that a lot of dancers take. I knew that I didn't want to do that, but I always wanted to perform. And um, I was definitely afraid of performing. <laughs> I had, you know, I did a performance class at Balmere. Um, I met someone at a social. He asked me to be his partner. I went there and it just didn't come together the way I thought it would. That and was for and Salsa. That was, that for was Salsa. Salsa. Yeah. yeah. And then then I went to um, Grisel Ponce. I did her Mambo Devo Challenge at the Salsa Congress. I think that was 2018, 2019. Um, and and that was just such a, oh God, that was a terrifying experience because, <laughs> right. you know, it's like you got to learn choreography in three days, three hours each day. And I'm not a trained dancer. So just remembering choreography was very difficult for me. Um, so in Hustle, so, you... So in, in Hustle, I was able to get with the team. You know, we were able to practice enough. Um, and perform. Who's team? And, oh, <laughs> Latin Hustle Warriors with uh, Nelson Flores. And actually, that was a great just getting on, getting to perform and work with Nelson and the people that were on the team. It just was so, it's a full circle moment for me, you know. Um, one, because Nelson had initially, after he, you know, we went out, we had our class with him and then we went out dancing and we were everywhere. And of course he started the channel. So he started to see the videos, you know, he approached me, um, that Labor Day at Tri-State and he told me that, you know, Yolanda, you should compete. You know, you've gotten so much better. And, um, but I just didn't want to, I don't like competing. I don't like that. Yeah, right. And so, so I told him there that if he ever put together a team that, you know, I would love to be on it. And um, he wasn't did too really excited it, about that. Did you really put it like that? Or, I mean, maybe initially, but how did the team actually come together? That's how it came together. I think because I asked him to put the team together. Yeah, and asked him. <laughs> but then too. But, asking him and asked him. Yeah, and asked him but and another said, reason why I felt like we needed a team was because we need to bring some new blood into Hustle. I felt that, like, Hustle, you know, is an older community. Um, 60s, 70s, you know, I'm in my 50s. I'm not ashamed to say. Um, and we need new people. We need to continue the dance along, you know? And so I was thinking, because I was in the salsa world and I go to the congresses and you see all these performances, but you don't really see many hustle performances. The only yeah. hustle performance that I knew of was um, uh, Elvis Colado and Melanie Castillo. Melanie Castillo, they did one um but there really wasn't a hustle presence and you know saceros and and hustle you know kind of mix and match they so if we could get some of those people over the younger crowd you know i thought that that would be great so i figured hey we need to put a team together now honestly i wanted him to convince like maybe um what's his name from yamule uh, I can't remember his name right now. 
um, the, the leader of Yamule to get his people to like put together something really flashy and big, you know, to get people excited. Right. But he was like, he wasn't doing this. So <laughs> he smart. Wasn't, oh, smart, yeah, put yeah. on, put on this. So, um, so then I was like, well, hey, I, why not put my money where my mouth is? And since I've always wanted to perform, you know, I approached him and said, hey, if you are willing, you know, I want I want to dance on this team. And um, I think it would be great, you know, because maybe we can attract some new people to um, to the hustle. And so he put together his over 50 team with a few a sprinkle of of youngins. Right. And uh, yeah, we had our opportunity to do our first performance in um, Trinidad at the Salsa uh, T and T Fiesta, Fiesta, yeah, which is a a, con- a congress down in in Trinidad, which was it was such a great experience, great experience. I, I I'm forever grateful to Nelson for you know allowing me that opportunity. And, and then my team members too, because they're such wonderful people, great dancers. We're all, we're not really pros, except for maybe his, his son and, and, uh, daughter-in-law. Um, but it just was such a great, great experience for well, me. Well, you performed that also at, uh, at Tri-State, right? And in, yes. in Miami, right? Right, right. We performed also at Tri-State, um, and Miami, which was turned into a competition, which I was just so <laughs> I was I didn't like that part of it too much. But but still, again, it was still a great experience. And um, it was well received. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you had a lot of, you know, I think you had standing yeah. ovation. Um, I can't remember which, but yeah. Uh, yeah. The reaction was very, very strong. Yeah, that the last the the one in Miami wasn't my personal best because I was just so I was nervous and I think I was more nervous there because I was around people I knew. The other ones I they were strangers. I don't know what it is when you're around people you know. Sometimes you get a little bit more on edge. And then our team had to change a little bit because um, some people couldn't make it to that particular one, so right. it was condensed somewhat. So right. then it's like more eyes on me, like <laughs> yeah. you think the great. eyes don't get this first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, like like yeah, when you have uh five couples or what have you, you know. Right. Yeah. But all those but videos, by me. the way, all those videos, by the way, are on the M one two three channel on their respective events in the those playlists. So anyone who's watching this now can go and check out uh, you know, those performances. But you know, speaking speaking about uh events. Which would you say are your favorite events or or favorite? The hustle events. Oh, hustle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, surprisingly, my favorite hustle event last year was <laughs> Hustle into Paradise at Pompano Beach. Mm-hmm. I I didn't know what to expect. Um, actually, that was our first. Wasn't it our first? Like, kind of go away well try stay to sort of go away but yeah, that but was long a dis- long, yeah, long distance yeah 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 because that was longer than Dis- disco america disco america is in pennsylvania yeah, that's, that's kind of close too yeah. yeah my favorite was um hustle into paradise um produced by marianne rosa and papano beach florida um i loved that event and um well one i love florida so that's number one. <laughs> number two was by the beach. I love the beach. <laughs> um, but I liked it because it just, you know, it wasn't too many competitions. Um, it was centered around social dancing and socializing with the people that, you know, that you just hung out with. And I loved it. I loved right. it. It was so, it was so nice. It was a well-produced event. Everything was in order. Um, made new friends. I made some new friends, um, and I also got a chance to, you know, meet like really 
um, solidify old friendships, you know? Because right. when you go away with people, it's different than when you see them pop in and out in your general locale, you right. know? So that was really nice. I really, really enjoyed that event. Um, and I also, I enjoy the local events too. Um, Starlight, yeah. you know, we go to Starlight a lot, Winter Circle. Sure. sure. Um, but but I love I love the ones where we go away, and I want to definitely do more of that. Uh, coming well, up. you know that's a that that's great because my next question is, you know, is travel a goal for dancing and and why? Yeah. Well, of course, you know, you know, you already know that I want to I want to travel around. My goal in this second half of life is to travel around the world dancing. That's my that's my goal, my vision for my life. And um, I never thought, you know, that I would be traveling and performing dance. Uh, if someone told me that I would be doing this, you know, 10, <laughs> 20 years ago, <laughs> I'd be like, stop lying. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so I love to travel. Um, I didn't get a chance to really travel that much while my kids was uh, growing up abroad, ab you know, for traveling abroad, just in yeah. the States. Um, I grew up traveling. Uh, my parents had a motor home. So we traveled, again, the country and Canada. But I've always wanted to, you know, go to other countries, visit other countries and just see how the people live. And meet new people. Another, you know, you get to dance with different people. That's another thing. I love my people here in New York, and my people in the U.S. You know that I dance with. I love you guys, but it's nothing like fresh meat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's nothing like you know, and see how they interpret the music and how they interpret the dance. I know this is hustle, and I, I'm, I'm gonna stay on track to some degree. But speaking to that. Um, when I performed in Trinidad at Salsa um, Fiesta TNT, I had the opportunity to dance with people, like I said, from another country. And how they interpret the music was so refreshing because, you know, here you go to Salsa event, you're dancing strictly Salsa for the most part. You, or bachata, bachata, I almost said bachata. Bachata, you're dancing bachata. Or... <laughs> You know, there, the way they interpret the music and because they dance multiple dances, most of the dancers dance, you know, multiple Latin dances, they mix it all up on the same song. And it was just so invigorating and just exciting, you know. So it just was so nice to kind of experience that. I probably wouldn't have experienced that if I hadn't gone abroad, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um... And they dance, like I said, the hustle and salsa, kizomba, cha cha, everything. And you could dance that, all of that, in one dance with some of those dancers there. They know how to hear the music and feel the music and interpret that with their their dance movements. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So I want to do some more traveling. That's right. that's why. Well, let, let's move along. And uh, okay. the next thing I'm going to ask you is. What's the next thing you're looking toward in Hustle? What are you looking forward to in Hustle? What's the next thing? You, for me or just in general? For you. For you. Hmm. What's the next thing for me? <laughs> I would say traveling and dancing. Um, I do want to get a. I do want to get better with my styling. And. There you go. Um, you know, so I definitely want to go back to Veronica because I love her styling. Um, and actually, I want to—I would love to take some classes with some other people. Like, I, I want to meet Erica Smith. I mean, she's a person that inspired me to, to even social dance. Um, and I thought I would have met her by now, but I guess I might have to trickle over into West Coast Swing and <laughs> try to find her. Something, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I would love to meet her. Oh my God, I just want to give her a big hug and tell her thank you for inspiring me, you know? Um, 
there's another dancer that you wanna that you want to either oh. learn from or <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. I I'm on the female side. You know, I would probably I would also like to learn from Atoy. I like Atoy as far as females. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I've taken some classes with Lorianne Greenhouse, and I like her style too, um, Maria Torres. But okay, we're gonna go on the on the male side. There's some people that I would love to dance with, and the one person that I absolutely, absolutely love and got an opportunity to meet and dance with in Miami, Hector Barrios. Right. I love Hector. I love his style. Um, to me, he has uh, what I would have envisioned, not that I was in the clubs because I wasn't. I was only nine or ten when Hustle initially came out. But um, he has a style that, to me, lends itself, I guess, to the club, like club style. He has such great energy. He really brings the heat to Hustle. Um, and, you know, I saw him on a video on YouTube way back when we first started you know, exploring it. And um, when I saw that video, I said, actually, he was a motivator for me to really, you know, practice because I said, hey, one day I'm going to get an opportunity to dance with this guy and I want to be ready. <laughs> and um, I thought I was ready in Miami. <laughs> but um, when I look at that video, you know, I was hanging on, but it was by a thread. <laughs> so I would love, I would love to train with Hector, you know, right, right. he would be someone I would love to like dance with on a weekly basis. So Hector, if you see this video, I know you're in Florida. Um, <laughs> when I'm in town, if you can <laughs> Carve out a little time for me. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I um, I would love to train with him. He yeah. he has some really great moves. Um, I would love to see his moves preserved. That's another thing too. I would love to see. You know, all of the <clears throat> all of the people that I kind of deem as pioneers. You know, in this dance. You know, Billy. We have a lot of a lot of catalog of his, you know, that we can see. Um, but like, you know, Boots and Beth and Louie, you know, I learned from them on the dance floor, you know, Derek Allen, even Alex, who I haven't really seen any videos besides the ones that you've taken, you know, where we could preserve their styles, you know, f- for years to come, uh, I would love to see. I would love to see that Maria. You know, we have some of Maria Torres, and and the people are still teaching, like Lorianne and Kelvin and all of them. But, um, you know, some of the people that, you know, either camera shy don't come out, or you know, they didn't perform. They weren't performers. Uh, it would be nice. Or, or, to, in, or in other locales, you know, outside of New York, right? Dick Dixon right. and. Right, yeah. Shay. Exactly. Yeah. Shay was another one that I saw a lot of because he used to dance with Erica. Yes. And so I saw a lot great. of them. They look great together. Yes. I used to watch a lot of their videos. And two, again, because I, I didn't see many black faces, you know, they a lot of times were the only black couple that competing in these videos that I saw. So right. Um, it was just that was refreshing too. I got a chance to dance with Shay too in Miami, which, which was so wonderful as well. It's wonderful to like see these people on YouTube, which is sort of like the boob tube, the big screen, you know. And you know, they're superstars, you know. Um, when you don't know them. <laughs> They're still superstars when you do know them, you know, and then you get the opportunity to actually dance with them and then get to know them as people, you know, um, (laughs) it's just, it's just so nice. I, I can't, it's hard to put it into words, at least for me, uh, it's hard to put into words how grateful I feel to be in it at this time. Another person that I wished I could have danced with, um, but he passed away before I, 
I even got into dancing was Artie Phillips. I would have loved to dance with him mm. you know? um, and experience some of his moves. Oh, and Graciano. I didn't get a chance to dance with him either. Uh, <laughs> ah, I, I love Graciano. Graciano and Danny. Yeah, I love Dan- Daniela Trugo from Italy. Yeah, I, I would love to meet her too. I would yeah. love to do, I would do classes with her too. I liked her styling. So. It's funny, it's funny you mentioned that too. It, it's, it, it's, it's nice too that you're leading into all the questions that I, <laughs> oh, that, I'm asking, that, I, that I'm about to ask and in the, in the order that I was going to ask them. It, okay. it, you know, yeah, because what's great is that, you know, dancing seems important to you. Uh, but what about the social aspect of attending events? And I know that you're, <laughs> I, I, I just let you take it from there. Um, well, I could be, I'm going to say I could be extroverted because most people, you know, they, they know me to say hello and to speak and to converse. Um, but there's a part of me that's an introvert. So, you know, I like my alone time. You know, I'm into crafting, paper crafting and uh, textile crafting. So, you know, I like my alone time. But I have to say that I've met so many wonderful people. I mean, my dance community, this dance community is my family. I'm an only child, you know, and I have two children, but I'm an only child. So I don't have any siblings. And I have some cousins, you know, but our interests don't really cross besides just blood, <laughs> you know, right, bloodline. Right. Yeah. So um, my friends, I tried to get my friends to come in to dance, but they couldn't really hang in there like me. They weren't fanatics. So my dance community have become my family. And uh, I've met such wonderful people, and especially ladies. Because um, for over 20 years, I was in the information technology field. Okay. So I was always around guys. You know, I engineering, I was <laughs> with guys. I was like, yeah. sometimes the only male. woman. Seems to be a male-dominated industry. Yeah, yeah. So right. I was always around a lot of guys. I didn't really have many lady friends, uh, female friends. And um, getting into dance. I was able to forge some really wonderful friendships. Like I have mentioned Miyoshi Miyoshi Pearson, like a sister to me, you know, Um, I I love her. And then, you know, I've met so many nice ladies and, uh, and guys too. I met a lot of guys. It also helped me to um, see men in a different way because, you know, I'm divorced and it was it was a little rough patch in my life, and for many years I dated and with different people, and it just didn't work out. And I kind of had like a sour taste about men, you know, in my in my life. And coming into dance, it's helped me to really appreciate male the male companionship, male friendship, build friendships. You know, I got to meet you. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. you know, um, and I, I love the social aspect of of this whole community. I um, now, you know, when I go dancing, I usually like to speak to everybody. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, that delays our first dance. Um, but usually, you know, once I'm on the dance floor, I'm on the dance floor. Yeah. 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 So, um, so with regards to the social aspect that I've met so many nice people and like I said, the guys, I also, um, because I, I was a single mom for so long and, and I'm just so used to being independent and doing, you know, doing my own thing, being a leader you sometimes lose the femininity that, you know, that women ha- should have. You know, you, you take on a lot of masculine en- energy. And dancing, I feel, has helped me to 
kind of lean into my femininity, lean into more of a following role because I don't lead. That's something that I would like to learn how to do with regards to hustle. You asked me where I want to go. Eventually, I would love to learn how to lead um, because I feel like sometimes when I hear the music and I get led, I, I, I think to myself, oh, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's that masculine leading energy. I wouldn't have done that. I would have done something else. But because I don't know how to lead, then what can I do? Nothing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I would love to learn how to lead so that I can interpret the music the way I'm feeling it and, you know, lead someone, you know, maybe come up with a signature move as well. You know, that would be fun. Never know. Yeah, you never know, you know, because I don't really see like there's a lot of ladies that can lead and follow. But from what I have experienced, I'm not going to say that it doesn't exist, but from what I've experienced, um, you know, they're just doing the normal term patterns that we learn in class. Um, Not, you know, creating their own moves or say style. Right. Of, of leadership, you know the the way you would see it in a man or a man. Right. I, mean, I think that there's some OG uh, or veteran uh, uh, female leaders who have the chops for that. But yeah, I I, I know what you're saying, and I yeah, think that it's a, yeah, because you know leading is a lot tougher than than it yeah. appears to be. And even with me coming back, I'm still trying to get my hustle on as a leader. Right. And, uh, there, there's still nuances and other things that uh, take a while. So unless you, you know, unless you really dedicate mega time, right, know, kind of, you know, to see that, we'll, we'll, you know, it, it would take some time. Right. Listen, um, we're gonna we're gonna kind of wrap it up here. Okay. But what, what, what I'm gonna do is, I always, I say always, and I've only had two interviews. Even though <laughs> I had one interview between our two with you right uh but my goal is to always end with this one question you know i i i will try not to ask the same questions to all the guests okay but the last question is what does latin hustle mean to you is it is it just one thing or i can whatever it means to you you know you know uh it's like saying what's life to you, you know, you you can't just have one answer, whatever, whatever comes to your mind. What does Latin hustle mean to you? It means, uh, I would say, just freedom, you know, freedom, freedom to be who you want to be, you know. Um, One thing I like about hustle is that there's structure. But unlike some of the other dances where you really have to stay rooted and grounded and, and the timing, the timing and hustle is a little forgiving and that you can really kind of express yourself a little bit more, at least for me, I guess, because I, I can, I understand it a little bit better now. Um, but I, I just feel free, especially when I, I get a nice classic disco song you know that i grew up on that i hadn't heard in a long time right and i'm you know dancing and and i don't even have to be dancing you know doing a whole bunch of crazy turn patterns or anything like that i know a lot of times the leaders you know they think that they're boring you on the dance floor because they're doing more basic patterns or you know movements but sometimes with the right song it's just wonderful you yeah. know and i and i can feel free to just relax in the dance and relax in the music and really enjoy you know my partner and smile and just be free and uh i have to say that hustle is probably my best dance my out of all the dances that i dance right now and um my strongest right. and in it I think because it's my strongest and because I identify with the music because I grew up on the music, I can be free. I can be free. So I, I just, I just love, I love hustle. 
I love dancing. Yeah, um, but Latin hustle to you means freedom. Yeah, freedom to be who you want to be. And even when you look at the community, I mean, the community is so diverse. You have all different ethnicities. You have people of different uh, sexual orientation or, you know, gender or however you want to call it. You just have everybody. And we all get along. We all dance with one another. I mean, like, you, you'll see two men dancing. And it's not, it means nothing. It's a dance. It's, you know, and they're having a good time. We're all just enjoying ourselves um, the way I feel the world should be, you know? Right. I have to say, hustle, Latin hustle, the community, to the dance, to the people, is is a good microcosm of how the world uh, would be a happier place if everybody could dance Latin hustle. <laughs> but yeah, to, me, to me, for those reasons, it just means freedom. You know, you're free. You can be what you want. You'll, you're going to be accepted. You're in. And, you know, and they'll, and people will embrace you. People will gladly teach you. They won't point the finger and say, oh, you can't look, you know, she's, she can't get the, I don't know, the turn or whatever. Um, I have so many of the gentlemen and, and women that I've danced with when I first started taught me so many things, you know, on the, I learned a lot of it on the dance floor. Right. Sunset Hustle. I remember John Laraquenta. You know, he taught me when you come out and you do the double turn spin. He taught me that. Her. You know, these are like the the mighty the mighty people that are in the background that don't don't, don't necessarily end up in all of the videos. You know, or right. or compete at least now. Maybe they did back in the day, but they they lend the, their time and their energy and their patience. To grab to grab the newbies and teach them a little thing here or there and dance with them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I really appreciate that. I have to say I appreciate everyone who I've ever crossed paths with, where I dance with the women, the men, people I haven't danced with, just meeting them and talking with them. I appreciate all of their their kind words, their support, and um. And I just have to say, they are freedom. That's that's what it. That's what it. Uh, it means to me. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you know, for you to see it that way, and and for you to feel relaxed and at home, you know, with um, that type of insight. You know, that's very yeah. that's, that's very cool. Yeah. So this is gonna be it. This is it. You know, this we, is it. This is it. We made it through the interview. We uh, made it through the interview. Yes, I, I appreciate your time. You know that you. Yeah. You know that you take to because that you've been busy of late, and I, and 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 I I'm glad that you uh, were able to you know carve out a little bit of time so we could finish this, but um, not sure I, what to go up, but um, <laughs> you know uh, people yeah. are already responding to the little clips that you know I've been yes. able, that that I posted. I, so I did yeah, that. yeah. Um, in a week or two, uh, this interview will go up, you know, on the channel on the podcast okay. uh, platform. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for, you know, having me back and, um, you know, I want to, I wish you all the best too. I think that this is such, you know, to watch your journey, you know, and I've seen it, you know, really close up and personal. Right. Um, it's just, it kind of, you know, it touches me really because you are inspiration to me. Um, someone who puts their, money where their mouth is you know you say you're gonna do it you do it and you put in a lot of time you know and effort and I've seen you grow with it you know all the different ideas and just working with you you know I just I'm just so proud of you know where you were how you started and where you're going with it uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of these interviews you know, that you're going to have with, with the hustle community. I think it's, I think I'm going to like these a little bit more than the dancing. 
<laughs> I, mean, I love the dancing videos. Right, right, right. But it's just, it's nothing like getting to know the people. I'm a people person. So, yeah. you know, it's just getting to know the people is going to be so nice to see. So I wish you, you know, all the best with this new endeavor. Yeah, um, thank you. It's, it's going to be, uh, hopefully this will be a weekly thing, you know, because there are a lot of people. Uh, that I could talk to uh, in a lot of different areas uh, related to hustle, right? And, uh, some some big names and and some not so big names, and you get to learn how hustle you know infiltrates in a good way, infiltrates our lives and make right. us uh, just love each other and love the dance and and love going forward. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, right. I give a big thumbs up for today. All <laughs> right. All right, oh, you know, care. we got a thumbs up on the thing on the. I don't know if you can I see know. that. <laughs> well, that's that's confirmation. Yeah, yeah, right. That's all, <laughs> that's all, that's all, that's all. all right. All right, Mike. Thank you.